This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group. One day every week, I prop myself at my... Ugh, this music's even older than me. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyers Show. I'm Carl Gerber, and whoa, that's my problem. This is, of course, Talk Radio 790 KBC. I don't think I'm going to be speaking with you before Black Friday, so I want to give you a little warning. If you're doing some internet shopping, I'm sure a lot of people will, if you get, or they just land up at your house, two boxes of the same thing, that's the kind of (laughs) dead giveaway that the product sucks. They don't expect both of them to work. Only one of them's going to work. And then if you have one of these deals where they tell you you're going to get Two things shipped that are exactly the same. (laughs) It's the same thing. Only one of them's going to work. All right. Well, tonight I've got someone here, and we're going to be talking about comedy, um, uh, genetic conditions, and unemployment, perhaps in that order. So, uh, hey, uh, you over there. Yeah, you. (laughs) Okay. Before we get started, I need to know if you're qualified to handle my mega lawsuit against my militant employer. Is this lawsuit megalopolis with contradictory testimony, emails you wrote that don't help your case, law that doesn't favor your dispute over hassles, hardships, and mega problems? Or is this supposed to be a reference to the extremely lucrative nature of your lawsuit, which you expect me to take your word for without any corroboration? <laughs> Are you asking me a question? Are you asking me a question? What is that? Um, Competent lawyers have been known to ask singular and even multiple questions. Okay. Have you ever represented a woman who has been fired from her job? (laughs) That's an odd question for someone named Carl Gerber, workplace lawyer. I've even represented men and people claiming to be men who are wrongfully terminated. Okay, don't be like pretending like you're going to bite my head off and spit my cervical vertebrae into that there microphone. Uh, Is that an option? I'm I'm not saying I I want to use my my teeth in that manner. If I dull my teeth, I won't be able to gnaw myself uh, out of a rope like if the Taliban captures me like that soldier in the last uh, week. But maybe there is somebody waiting around in the studio that could do the teeth and cervical vertebrae thing and put up both out of the misery I fear this interview is going to inflict. Oh, God. Is it true that you've represented females in cases involving job loss? No, I've faked my career the last 25 years, uh, next week, and I, I've only represented persons identifying themselves as men, including those pregnancy trials and appeals I won, which you can read about in the law books and legal newspapers. Uh, yeah, but I, I have represented women. <laughs> Obviously. But have you represented women in their 30s who have a ginormous case against their employer? No, I, I tend to exclude all persons in their 30s. Women sexually harassed in their 20s or fired due to pregnancy, I can handle that. You know, people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s, I'm more than willing to help. But seriously, why would I take a case involving a female client in her 30s? I discriminate against people in their 30s. Aha, I knew it. I'm going to report you to the state bar. Ask me another stupid question, I'll give you another ridiculous answer. Would you represent a woman who is less than 40 and older than 29? Capiche? (laughs) Do you have any additional questions? Perhaps a new one, which is more interesting? Why am I making you mad? Bored and mildly annoying. Are you saying that I don't have it anymore? 
Look, I'm I'm not running beauty pageants as a precursor to grabbing women's private parts and maybe running for president. The whole unconsented to grabbing thing of people, I I don't know. It's just it's not really my forte. Not your forte, I bet. That's why you're insinuating I don't have the have in having it anymore. My forte, the point is more representing women of all ages, including in their thirties. Ah! So do I have it or don't I? He who has magnesium controls the world. You don't seem to have any magnesium, at least, on you. So I'd have to say you don't have it. I'm not talking about carrying around a blob of magnesium. I'm talking about making people angry. Um, Veteran employment lawyers have high thresholds, and then there's my situation at home. I, I can't really get it in the bath. Yeah, I heard about your holes. The holes in your dining room ceiling, the one at the bottom of your lot nobody will take credit for, the holes in your porcelain thrones. Uh, I fixed the drywall in the dining room as for the hole at the bottom of the lot, which uh, happens to be quite deep. That does disturb me. I think whoever did it would take credit for that crater. Aren't you forgetting something? No. The holes in your toilets? Duh. This isn't really amusing to me. I'd rather be playing Clash Royale on my phone or answering 115 special interrogatories on a Sunday afternoon. So how come you're ignoring my case? See, I don't like that. Whenever someone tells me how big their case is before I've heard about it, I tend to tune out. Really? I think you have a problem. Yes, I'm still Carl Gerber, and that's still my problem. (laughs) I guess I walked right into that one. If this conversation doesn't start involving a job termination or a legal wrong and employment, you're going to be falling into the three by three hole at the bottom of my lot. Are, are you threatening me? You're threatening me, aren't you? I'm going to put a restraining order out on you. Oh, uh, that would be appreciated. Look, I am supposed to be making you angry. Why? Did some enemy of one of my aliases from the 80s pay you off to get on the show and try to make me angry? Why? Don't you have any angries now? Oh, I see. You haven't done enough in the last 30 years that anybody would care to be your enemy. Everybody has enemies. I have 4,369 arch enemies (laughs) and 105,908 lesser enemies, mostly due to my work. Everybody has enemies. I know you have enemies, and if you don't, you are a wannabe. Yeah, I don't really have enough spare time to sit around wondering if I might have pissed someone off and they're now my enemy. You've got enemies. Now, do you think that hole appeared at the bottom of your lot? Heavy equipment with an auger, nobody uh, hand dug that pit. That's how it appeared. Yeah, appears to me that somebody's digging your grave for you. I think someone wanted to see what the soil conditions were down there, or they were trying to hit the line to the sewer, and they were just too lazy to fess up to digging the hole because they'd have to refill it and recompact it. This isn't working. I, <laughs> I've i lost it. I, I am not making you angry. I, again, why are you trying to make me angry? You're supposed to be seeking my legal advice about an employment problem. I'm an agitator. It's my job to make people angry. Do we really need somebody to make others angry these days? There's plenty of anger in the air. Yeah, don't you hate angry people? I said hate. I hate angry people. Don't you hate angry people? Well, there's always been angry people in the lawsuit business, from the plaintiff to the defendant to the judge to arbitrator. But these days, everyone's angry. And hostile. Do you hate hostility? What do you hate more, anger or hostility? I need to know in order to do my job. Were you an outside agitator, like one of those Vietnam protesters? Dude, I'm 33 years old. How could I be a Vietnam protester? (laughs) Beats me. See, you're trying to make me angry. Can we just get on with your legal problem? Why is there always a fight to get people to just tell me what happened at their job? Do you mind if I take out a jewel and tell you my story? 
As long as there isn't any funny colored smoke. Sorry, I don't do e-cigarettes. I just keep thinking I'm supposed to be making somebody angry. This is a very serious problem. I don't suggest getting into your car and driving home yourself. Mm. Are you suggesting you'll give me a ride in your super-powered Mercedes with blacked-out windows and a couple of amplifiers in your trunk blasting a bunch of sexy rap music? I was rather referring to the dangers of a road rage, angry people, and road rage. Besides, do you really think I'd drive a Mercedes, let alone run my, <laughs> ruin my hearing, blasting some loser's sexist rants over a house beat? Then why would I go to you? Who'd hire a lawyer who doesn't have a Mercedes and a couple of pairs of subwoofers in their trunk? I represent and I represent employees, and I own my own jackhammer. This isn't Miami Vice, where I ask my bosses for flash money and drive an overpriced, sluggish Mercedes. All right, you're listening to Carl Gerber, Workplace Lawyer Show. And if you have a real legal problem of a large nature and you want to get compensated big time, you should give my office a call at 877-5. Two five zero seven hundred. Once again, eight seven seven five two five zero seven hundred. If you're looking for big time compensation, we're not interested in those little tiny cases. Eight seven seven five two five zero seven hundred. If you've been fired from your job, sexually harassed. You're owed unpaid wages, individually or as a group. Or if you just want to call up and make me angry, that's a possibility, too. When we come back, we're going to find out what this woman's legal problem is, other than <laughs> trying to make me angry, because that's a legal problem. You've been listening to Carl Gerber, Workplace Lawyer Show. This is Talk Radio 790 KBC. can make you all yes, you can. I say yeah. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a consistent force in fighting for the rights of California employees. They've represented thousands of employees in cases in which they've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, discriminated against at work, or owed wages individually or as a group such as a class action. The Employment Lawyers Group has maintained a high win rate and a serious record before the California courts. Please call 877-525-0700 for an experienced work lawyer. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, research the firm at worklawyerca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. If you hire the Employment Lawyers Group, your legal problem becomes theirs to solve. This car I'm driving, I overpaid big time. It was such a f mistake. I should have just gone to Carfax.com, but I went to some other site. They gave me a price range? Oh, they were way off. Son of a... Carfax has a better way. When you search used cars at Carfax.com, you get the most accurate price based on the Carfax report, so you never have to overpay on a used car again. Start your used car search today at Carfax.com. I used to have more hair. I used to have more color. And I used to have cancer. I beat it. I did. Not alone. I used to have no idea what the American Cancer Society did. Research? Yeah. But also, free rides to chemo and free lodging near hospitals. I used to maybe give a little. Then I got so much back. I used to have cancer. Please give at cancer.org. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call this toll-free number right now. 800-390-9528. That's 800-390-9528. By calling your addiction team, you're taking the first steps to recovery. The help you need could be one call away. 800-390-9528. Make the free call now. 800-390-9528. Your addiction team is a third-party advertiser for various treatment centers and placement networks. Individual results will vary. Visit youraddictionteam.com forward slash turns for more information. Target is here to help you discover all the ways to get your holidays holla done. Like order pickup. Just order ahead and have it waiting for you at the store. Try Drive Up in the Target app and we'll bring it right out to your car as soon as you arrive. And now, we'll bring the holidays home to you with same-day delivery shopped by shipped. Whether it's a TV, hot cocoa mix, or ornaments for the tree, Target makes it easy to get what you need when you need it. Target run and done. Learn more at Target.com slash ways to shop. Restrictions may apply. Just me. One day every week, I pop myself at my front door. 
Uh, talk Radio 790 KBC. We like to mix things up a little bit here. You're listening to Carl Gerber, Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber. That's still my problem. I've got a guest here who likes to make people angry. I'm not sure why, and I'm not sure how it relates to labor law. Okay. Well, they said I don't have it anymore. I am not making people angry. You're not even getting hot under your collar. Uh, who did you work for? Anger Incorporated. You ever hear of them? Jesus Artoris, they're that sister company of Euphoria Incorporated. I, I know this because I, I sued Euphoria Incorporated and also Anger Incorporated in the lawsuit because they share the same facilities and management. Yeah, my job was to rile them up. Then the happy person takes over and gets to them wearing the state of mental shock over all I did to get the person angry. The outfit's horrific business model. I, I understand all the Silicon Valley companies hire them and make them infiltrate their online and telephone help. Do you know how telephone support works sometimes? The judge forced me to enter into a confidentiality agreement to get proprietary information from these two companies. One document got produced as highly confidential, which... Explain that sometimes you think someone on the other end of the telephone support has a, a weird accent or they aren't understanding you, but that's just to get you mad and frustrated. So when you get a slight, although inadequate answer, you're pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I've worked those campaigns. Yeah, this is all coming back to me. A uh, few things can make me start remembering things from an old case. Wait, have I met you? You didn't take my deposition. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I did. Uh, once I, I write a brief where I have to cite a witness's deposition testimony by their name, I always remember their name. Your Angular Golakuski. I remember the spelling of your name with an extra I at the end. It's, it's Gol, G-O-A-L, and then G-U-L-L. -L. It's a very unusual spelling. Actually, that's not my real name. What? You gave deposition testimony under oath, under an assumed name? No, fake. Fake would be a better word. I never thought you'd assume I was Angular Golinski. Um, you committed perjury. You said on the record right after taking the oath to tell the truth under penalty of perjury, you know, your hand was raised and all, and you said your name was Angular Golinski, which you saw me struggle to spell right on the notepad in front of me. Now, how can you bring a lawsuit now with that? Don't you remember the company required you to destroy all the evidence as a condition to sell them? And you said you wouldn't. Your client wanted the $250,000 settlement when he had $600 in lost wages. You said you'd have to ask the judge, and Judge Bizu said, as long as destroying the evidence was not a crime or fraud, it was an enforceable settlement term. You appealed, the court said they thought the term was troublesome, and Judge Bizu had to figure something out. And then, somebody broke into your old Oxnard office, where you <sighs> used to store files in the garage. The burglar stole some power tools and exposed a whole bunch of asbestos then you had to throw the file out that whole setup seemed a little fishy yeah you weren't bright enough to realize euphoria incorporated and all that did what they did to just get the depositions destroyed where their employments gave fake names and lied through their teeth <laughs> you weren't speaking for your teeth really because i talked like this Jesus is not so employed. Angus has a cook incorporated. Uh, uh, sorry about that. How, how do you know about their raid on my old storage garage? <laughs> That's easy. Your client told me. <laughs> what? There was a gigantic liquidated damage clause where if he said anything about the settlement, he'd be fined like 10 grand or maybe it was 20,000. It was 25 grand. Per breach. He and I had like 10 conversations about the amount of the settlement and the negotiations. What is going on here? Are you trying to get that guy in trouble or extort money on live air? I just want to sue my employer and get more than him. What is your name anyway? Your, your real name? Andy Dukakukanitsky. 
I know better than that. Have you ever represented anybody who previously lied under oath? No. <laughs> Furthermore, Duca Kuka Kinsey is not a real name. I'm on to that one. Uh, this time I am telling you the truth. Now, I've had two guests on the show with the same surname, Duca Kuna Kinsey. One of them is Cindy D. Oh, Cindy D. She is so pretty. And now that she's a genius that can play Starlight because Starlight twinkled away after we resurrected Hanita Orkin Helms in episode 28, I've been informed Duka Kuka Kinsey is not a real name. Oh, did I say Tuka Kuka Kinsey? You did. Oh. I meant Duka Kuka I <laughs> know how this works. This is episode 31. Duke Kuda Kinsey is a name to be used when one wants to feign having said or written something differently before because they don't want anyone to ever figure out what their last name is. Wow. First I couldn't get you angry, and now this. Does Anger Incorporated have your real name? Are you kidding do you know how many people I've rubbed the wrong way? Uh, this isn't the new ownership of the neuromassage clinic that acts as the passageway to Dumas's office. We had quotas at Anger Rant Incorporated. I had to get a minimum of four high-end customers angry every hour or two VIPs and six normal customers. You worked under an assumed name because you were afraid the people who you made angry would find out your real name and put carrots in your exhaust pipe? Carrots in my exhaust pipe. That'd be nice. I love carrots. Not just on Easter, but also on Black Friday. Yeah, I rather fancy you making a bridge out of carrots for the poor kids at the orphanage. Oh my God, how did you know? I'll be doing that next month. Now, back to the whole employment situation. What were you selling that required you to be the angry one? I've been on other lines, but at the end of my employment, they dis integrated me to that carpet store dumbass used to work for in Queens. Now, if we're talking about an employment situation that occurred in New York, I can't give you legal advice. Yeah, yeah, don't jump to illogical conclusions. With the internet, they branched out all across the country. Well, if I recall correctly, Duma sold carpets for townhomes and people's heads. Yeah. Doesn't that explain why they needed an agitator? Uh, wouldn't being shipped one of those carpets be enough to get under someone's skin? No, no, on top of someone's head. Why would the same company sell carpets for townhouses and also carpets for the top of the skull? The fibers and the remnants were the same as those used on smaller swatches for heads. <laughs> you mean to tell me that they put... Residential carpet on people's heads? Men can be so desperate. Well, women too. Uh, for instance, someone order a Berber toupee? Right, and use a Dyson vacuum to clean the mat and then put it back on his head. Uh, that's pretty much how I thought it would go down. Well, actually, you're sort of right. Was, for instance, one of these sales pitches you can call out the same carpet cleaners to clean the stairs in your apartment and your toupee all at the same time? No fair. You must have heard that radio jingle in this station that's a competitor to the one in San Bernardino. You think I listen to competitor stations in San Bernardino? I've, I've got a lot more important business when I'm in Fontana. Oh, now you're making a Remus Helms joke. We're deep into this episode, and he hasn't even been mentioned yet. Don't you think that's a problem? Actually, I do. Were you fired? Was like a commission scheme breached and you weren't paid? Maybe you got some cut of the sales to the people you royally pissed off? Hey, tell that guy walking around the other room he needs more hair. Sir, the front of your head has a 25-degree incline of dung sticking straight up. Carl, you think you can hear me through the glass? <laughs> Sir, there are ants skiing down that slope. 
You guys cover it with a queen's carpet. Hey, Angie, this isn't Anger Incorporated. We we can't be insulting random employees of the radio station hoping to motivate the purchase of the product that shouldn't be on the market to begin with. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have been conditioned to make people angry. Is there something you can do that brings your mind away from the uh, this element character trait your former employer desired of you? Yes. Chocolate-covered salami. I may have missed that. Chocolate-covered salami. I used to sometimes have salami sandwiches, but after the inherited cholesterol scare of 15 and then 16, I've cut out red meats. Wow, that really is a shame. I just love making chocolate-covered salami. I'll be doing my thing at the downtown mission on Thanksgiving. Oh, right. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show, and I wanted to let you know that next week on this show, we're going to be celebrating my 25th anniversary as a real employment lawyer with a special guest, the most important man in Sun Valley and Fontana, Remus Helms. Remus Helms will be live in the studio after Thanksgiving next Sunday from 7 to 8 with me. But in the meantime, if you feel like calling a real employment lawyer who is now almost 25 years into representing employees and nothing else, you can do that at 877-525-0700. Once again, 877-525-0700 for a really Long-standing employment lawyer in my firm, 877-525-0700 for someone who has never actually represented Remus Helms or got him $200.1 million when his genital got infringed. So you're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. When we come back, we're going to find out more about what this lady Angie's problem is and the tall chocolate salami thing, hopefully. <laughs> Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a results-oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue. For an experienced employment lawyer, call 877-525-0700. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, read more about the firm at EmployeeLawCA.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Make your work problem theirs to solve. Talk Radio 790, KABC News Update, I'm Steve Cumming. SpaceX is delaying its third launch of a used rocket. A Falcon 9 rocket topped with at least 64 small satellites was supposed to launch tomorrow afternoon from Vandenberg Air Force Base. That rocket has already completed two missions. On Twitter, the space company said they need more time for pre-flight inspections. They did not say what specifically prompted the delay or when a new launch date would be. History would have been made on Monday as SpaceX has never launched a used rocket three times. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg is donating $1.8 billion to his alma mater, Johns Hopkins University, to help low-income families. The donation will be used exclusively for financial aid to students who can't pay. KABC SoCal weather, partly cloudy tonight with lows in the lower to mid-50s. More news coming up in 30 minutes, continuing coverage at KABC.com. I'm Steve Cumming, Talk Radio 790, KABC News. Are you looking for an alternative to drug and alcohol rehabilitation that allows you to recover in the privacy of your own home with an individualized program? The Key Light Company's Concierge Detox LA can be that alternative. Headed by Dr. Damon Raskin, addiction specialist, and clinical psychologist Dr. Howard Glass, Concierge Detox LA can meet your recovery needs. For more information, contact Concierge Detox LA at 323-935-9712. That's 323-935-9712. This car I'm driving, I overpaid big time. It was such a f mistake. I should have just gone to Carfax.com, but I went to some other site. They gave me a price range? Oh, they were way off. Son of a. Carfax has a better way. 
When you search used cars at Carfax.com, you get the most accurate price based on the Carfax report, so you never have to overpay on a used car again. Start your used car search today at Carfax.com. I used to have more hair. I used to have more color. And I used to have cancer. I beat it. I did. Not alone. I used to have no idea what the American Cancer Society did. Research? Yeah. But also, free rides to chemo and free lodging near hospitals. I used to maybe give a little. Then I got so much back. I used to have cancer. Please give at cancer.org. Hey, what's going on around your house? Need a little help? A second opinion? Well, I'm here to help answer any questions you have about your home. All you have to do is call. Join me, Lou Manfredini, every Saturday morning from 8 to 9 a.m. on House Smarts Radio, right here on Talk Radio 790 KABC. This is Behind the Mic with Brad Dalius. Hey, it's Brad Dalius, host of Behind the Mic, and we're wrapping up your day with your favorite L.A. sports teams, the latest buzz in national sports, and more weeknights at 11 on Talk Radio 790. KBC. One day every week. Talk Radio 790 KBC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber. We're talking to some angry person who got fired from a job and she started telling me about chocolate salami and something she's got to do for the orphanage. And I'm I'm wondering, Angie, if um you're going to try to make the poor angry. That's terrible. Oh, come on. Being bad isn't even in my genetics. I'll be making chocolate-covered salami at the mission. Is that a huge hit there? I don't just melt a bunch of chocolate on a Hebrew national sausage, if that's what you're implying. No, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> I wouldn't think you do that at all. Yeah, do you cook? Yeah, probably not. But if you do, you've got to try this. Soak a half a cup of raisins in a dish. If one-fourth of the Remus Helms thingy. <sighs> Ten minutes of soaking. Combine 14 ounces of tea biscuits broken into pieces so small that even an old man like you can't see them. While combining with one cup of bleached almonds, please do not use household bleach to change the composition of the almonds. Cocoa powder, two cups, and one half cup of butter. Al Bundy, no. <laughs> All in a mixing bowl with a radius of Remus Helm thing. Quite a few inches less than that. Put the cognac and raisins into the mixture along with the butter and 14 ounces of condensed milk sweetened by the happy people at Anger Incorporated. <laughs> One teaspoon of confectionery sugar. Mix well with your hands, not literally your hands. Use a mixing spoon until a stiff, dark, moist dough is formed. Mm, what about the salami? <laughs> okay, enough Remus Helms humor for tonight. All right, there's a microwave version of your recipe that's a little more, how do I say, you know, Martin Mull made a 30-minute history segment about this particular segment of the population during the mid-'80s. Their skin is a bit bleached out. It's not the Brazilian recipe you're advocating, but more Americanized, white version of chocolate salami. Hey, hey, I'm white. I make chocolate sal salami Brazilian style. You get a problem with that? You probably do, don't you? You have a problem with that. Hmm. Uh, think about pouring those bleach almonds onto the two cups of cocoa powder and tea biscuits so small you claim someone my age can't see them. Actually, I don't need glasses to see small things. <sighs> I am feeling better. Really relaxed. Would you mind if I just pass out for a few minutes? Oh, I think the listeners would be a-okay with that. Wake me up when the sound engineer <laughs> starts doing all those things <laughs> with his knobs and his levers. Uh, I shouldn't have said knobs and levers. Ah, she's out. Thank God for that. At least she won't try to push anybody's buttons for a few minutes. Buttons? You mean like red buttons? All right. A competent employee lawyer can always be found at 877-525-0700. Gotta say that while she's asleep. That's 877-525-0700 for a real California lawyer. Ready to take on your employer. 877-525-0700 for me and my firm of real sexual harassment and unpaid wage lawyers. <laughs> what? Uh. 
Ugh, I heard that. <clears throat> <sighs> She's out again. I wonder if all those hostile energies of hers make her tired. Mm, and hungry. Are we going to Tommy's after this? Could we just go grab me some mm, triple cheeseburgers and chili boat? I thought she had the munchies for a minute. Maybe a snack attack. Good God, it's a snack attack. Give me sausage, eggs, and beans, and chips. Milkshakes, clam bakes, fondue, and dips. And sauces, horses, 17 cups of barbecued beef with asparagus tips. She's waking up. I feel, feel like, like Kojak, Kojak sitting, sitting in a Cadillac. In the Cadillac. I, gotta I, gotta I gotta eat. I gotta eat a flapjack. A stack, a rack, a six pack jack. jack. Just, Just call me Jack, Jack Kerouac. Kerouac. Hey, Angie, now that you're awake again, I've got a personal question for you. Has all your conditioned anger affected your dating life? Oh, God. The only men who date me want to be knocked around and yelled at all the time. I mean, I'm not into leather and whips and 10-inch spiked heels. You know, with every job, it's important to separate the workplace from home life. And that's why I've turned to cooking. What else do you cook? <laughs> we could be here all night. Oh, just tell us a few of your recipes. Mm, I use a lot of chemicals. Is that safe? Duh, if the recipe calls for it. Like, what chemicals are we talking about? Well, I get acetone at the hardware store, <laughs> and hydroxys ammonia from the fertilizer you use in Oxnard. It creates a real toxic gas. I grind up some diet pills for the ephedrine, get a little <laughs> hydrochloric acid, Mm, throw in a leaking battery for the lithium. <laughs> scrape red phosphorus from matchsticks. A little toluene from brake fluid. I steal the lime from, from concrete. Sodium hydroxide and some sulfuric acid for drain clean, from drain cleaner. And I heat it up to 175 degrees. And then I put it into the... <laughs> you start getting a gap in your front teeth and looking like you've been dried out in a horror movie. My recipe doesn't make you angry. I'm not too happy. You just explained how to make meth on my show. There are a lot of impressionable high school students that listen to this show, trying to get ahead on the whole career game. But then again, I guess this could be a public service warning. The meth heads are basically ingesting highly toxic chemicals like those used in drain cleaners and batteries, which create environmental contamination preventing the sale of land where the batteries used to be disposed. Right. See, you see, you've just got a lot of people angry enough at the dangers of meth, they'll never freebase again. I'm not really thinking our listeners are meth heads, but I do think they may be opinion be leaders. You know, those types listening to talk radio and all, they'll probably tell others what's really in crystal meth and maybe turn off a few would-be meth heads. <laughs> and my employer said, I don't have it anymore. Since you do still appear to have it, I'd say the reason they gave for firing you was either protectual or uninformed. If they fired you due to misinformation, that's not a case. A, the pretext, however, for something more sinister and illegal is wrongful termination. How dare you? I have a genetic condition. Did your employer know a case for genetic condition discrimination like disability discrimination requires that the employer be aware of your genetic condition? Oh, they know. Has the genetic condition influenced your ability to work? Probably. It's hard to say. Can you be more specific? About what? The kind of cognac to use in the chocolate salami mix? <laughs> Things are asking. <laughs> I, I okay, ask. Remy Martin, 1738, VSPO, or even Hennessy Privilege, VSOP. Uh, does VSOP have anything to do with RSVP? Mm, can I call my mom and ask? She's very superior and very pale. Why do clients always jump around and avoid the relevant questions? Because it's confusing. I don't know if you're talking to me about my chocolate salami recipe or my ginormous case that I have. Uh, I don't really see that, but what happened to work that related to your genetic condition, what was that? As I understand things, nothing was said about your genetic condition when you were fired. Okay, so a few days before I was fired, I missed work. I hadn't missed work in about six months. I really liked the Queen's carpet thing. 
even though it wasn't making people royally PO'd, they just lost a lot of money because of their financial broker. Were you sick when you missed work? Not really. Actually, I felt pretty good before I worked out. I went to the Scream Therapy Gym where they turn up the temperature to 101 degrees and we jump up and down screaming for an hour. You know, if there was nothing wrong with you, why did you miss work? I needed to ponder whether I'd have a recurrence sometime in 2018 or maybe 2019 and whether I should get a pet squirrel. Because if I have a recurrence, I might not be able to take care of my squirrel. This sounds like a slightly unusual genetic condition, but I guess there are quite a few genetic conditions like BRCA and BRCA that might lie dormant until they strike with breast cancer or ovarian cancer. But until that happens, there isn't really much to do but test or maybe an elective surgery. Yeah, my genetic condition doesn't require me to test or anything like that. It's a pretty obvious condition. I know people don't like to talk about their medical conditions. That is one of the problems. Employers often don't know enough about the medical condition or even that someone has it. What the employer doesn't know, including the need for an accommodation, they're not responsible for. And there is not even a case that, that says, well, employers are supposed to be mind readers. Yeah. However, Sabrina Scurolita, my manager, is both a mind reader and a medium. I presume she didn't find out about your genetic condition through her powers. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought about that. But I'm a little creeped out right now. When we come back, we're going to find out why Angie is creeped out on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show that you're listening to on Talk Radio 790 KBC. The Employment Lawyers Group is a results-driven law firm whose goal is to get the right result for the client. They have represented employees with a high rate of success since 1993 throughout the state of California. They're only paid and if they are able to collect money from the employer so there's not any upfront fees or costs in order to hire them. They have represented thousands of employees who've been terminated from their jobs, sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or are owed wages in an individualized or group basis such as a class action. Call 877-525-525. 0700. That's 877-525-0700. They have operators standing by. They can also be reached at employeelawca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Hire them and make your workplace problem theirs to solve. The Online Trading Academy is the leader in investing education, and they can help you generate income for today or your retirement. Attend one of their free three-hour classes, and they'll send you home with a do-it-yourself investor's kit preloaded with some of their most popular video-based investing courses. It's a thank you just for attending. Classes are all over Southern California, the West Side, San Fernando Valley, Orange County. They'll teach you how to trade just like the pros, learn how to create daily, weekly, or monthly income using Online Trading Academy's patented supply and demand strategy. All you have to do is give them a call. 888-991-TRADE. That's 888-991-8723 to attend and get two free passes to their three-hour class so you can check everything out for yourself. And if you call right now, they'll send you home with their do-it-yourself investor's kit just for attending. It's loaded with exclusive investing courses and some of their best lessons from the pros. It's a limited time opportunity and seats go fast, so call right now. 888-991-TRADE. 888-991-TRADE. Or visit them online at otaclass.com. The wait is finally over. Dell's biggest Black Friday ever is on. Save up to 50% on Black Friday deals, plus get free shipping on everything. With massive deals on Dell computers with 8th Gen Intel Core processors, the hottest gaming gear, and savings on top brand electronics like Samsung TVs, it's the one sale of the year you don't want to miss. Just call 800 by dell or visit dell.com slash Black Friday. Quantities are limited. Call 800 by dell for more Black Friday deals. <laughs> The natural habitat of a creepy doll is a horror movie. It can't help being creepy. It's that small, fixed smile and those never-closing eyes, always watching you, plotting, which you're imagining. It's mindless. But when the creepy doll hears that Geico not only saves people money, but also gives them easy access to emergency roadside service through an award-winning app, it knows you should switch. Because yes, switching to Geico is a no-brainer. The only question is, how did the creepy doll move from the bedroom to the hallway? I would get out of the house. One day Talk Radio, 790 KBC. You're listening to Carl night. Gerber, Workplace Lawyer Show. Angie, you creepy creature. Why are you so creeped out? I'm thinking about the fact there's a bathroom down the hall. 
Yeah, but it's a pretty non-confrontational bathroom. It doesn't even have a urinal. Yeah, but there's a hole in the bowl, and the sink has a little opening in the drain. Do you know where that drain goes to? Presumably a sewer line, 18 to 36 inches below ground, that terminates at the actual sewer line outside of this building? Sewer rats. There are sewer rats down there. And you're the one who wants a pet squirrel. Yeah, but there are all kinds of morsels I could cook for a pet squirrel. I'd be roasting almonds by the fire, maybe reading the sanitary. I know I have an obligation to go out and find another job with all the new employment opportunities in the dynamic field of sanitary napkin database management. Maybe I could get a position with a government pension or a super high private sector salary. Second time, what's your genetic condition? I can't really evaluate your case if I don't know what it is. This is as embarrassing as being caught using the microwave to melt chocolate on a slice of salami. Maybe worse. I'm uh, prone to being <clears throat> nice. Is that a genetic condition? It's in my var genes. Is var genes some new reference to genetics? Actually, that's the name of Cindy D's daughter. The genius who's now putting on a pole dancing holiday special at the Mark Taper Forum. Virgin is something like in second grade. I thought the Nutcracker would be playing at the Mark Taper Forum anyway. Yeah, well, I got an Evite. It's on like Dunking Crab with a K. A personality trait is not a genetic condition that employment laws protect. Yeah, even if you work for Anger Incorporated and being nice is in your var genes. There's nothing disabling about being nice. <laughs> I'd certainly say that there is something disabling, you stupid fool. In the normal world, no. If you're supposed to be an agitator and anger incorporated, maybe you can't be predisposed to cordiality. Yeah, you know what? You've got to be angry these days. Take our whole government, both parties, all the people who can't get back to their homes right now because of fires, all the people who can't deduct their personal property taxes in 2018. <laughs> the list goes on. Everybody is angry. How am I supposed to survive in this world if I'm nice, simpatico? Couldn't they transfer you over to the happiness squad? Yeah, yeah. In 2017, when I had a fortnight spell of happiness and niceness, I put in for a transfer. You know what they told me? Well, you filled out the wrong form? That's a good one for employers always claiming a form isn't filled out right, so some leave absence should be denied because it's too hard to have them talk to the employee and they'd rather have some disparate division in another state where who knows what they do in that state where they believe in, I don't know, segregation or some archaic practice. That's where they're all deciding the form isn't filled out right under the non-existent laws other than those in California. Yeah. Human Resources said you don't just switch sides. You can't go from Anger Incorporated to Happiness Incorporated, even though we share the same lunchrooms and upper managers. It's sort of like someone in the House of Commons walking across the aisle and switching sides? No, no, no. It's more like Mitch McConnell joining... A going to Crosby, Stills & Nash at all concert and cozying up to Nancy Pelosi at a May Day rally. Oh, God, that, that's even weirder than this show. Why do you have to mention that? Just the thought is going to make me miss work tomorrow. I still think if they fired me for my Gumbo Jaila case, if they fired me for my predisposition, I still have a Gumbo Jaila case. I'm not or really sure opposite? what a Gumbo Jaila case is. There. It's ginormous. But, <laughs> but there's an angle I'm thinking of. <laughs> I've thought more about it. That bald guy roaming the building underneath the fluorescent lights of radio, the curvature on his head is more like a 21 degree uh, angle. My angle, and I'm not bald, so who knows what curvature in my cranium has. My angle is for your employer perceived you as having a disability or genetic condition, if that's the case, we might have something perceived. Being happy when you're supposed to be into anger is a disability. I'm not sure anyone other than my listeners would get this one.
Okay, maybe we can get a jury with Remus Helms and all those episode characters from that famous mistrial you talked about two shows back. I wouldn't count on that. If they fired you because they thought you didn't have the requisite anger anymore to be an agitator, that's not a case. Trying to stretch this into a non-existent genetic condition that's not a genetic condition is like pulling Stretch Armstrong's arms off. Oh, yeah. Have you ever done that? Watched all that red, sticky goo seep out onto your carpet to never come out? And then one day, you take scissors and you cut the red shag rug and realize it won't grow back? You know, all these references to prehistoric toys from the 70s or Apple II Plus games, they don't really have a meaning to a lot of our listeners. But what if your carpet could grow back. Wouldn't that be the squirrel's nuts? <laughs> no, better than squirrel's nuts? Someone would have to mow my carpet. Precisely. That's the beauty of a continuous growth burper carpet wig. Are you for real? Oh, yeah. I have never had a gluten plant or even done my lips. Wait, do I look like that woman you talked about at Back to School Night? Who couldn't remember her lips? I was more referring to the continuous growing of Berber carpet. Oh, yeah. That's genetics for you. Queen's carpet makes the wool grow even after it's come off the sheep. Dumas used to sell that crap? He even used to wear it. But when he moved to Southern California, he decided it was too hot. A question. How does one vacuum an ever-growing Berber toupee? Double-A battery and rechargeable cartridges now available. Are these vacuums? Uh, tampoons. A sort of combination between the terms toupee and vacuum. It's a trademark. Is the act of using a tampoon called tampoon or tampuming? It's like a vacuum. You vacuum sweatshirts and uh, fetuses. Right. Um, even though I would only wear an ever-growing Berber toupee for, say, sport or maybe a fancy tea at Hogwarts, West Los Angeles, but since I don't really freak with those establishments, perhaps yeah, I right. could just pick up a tampoon and tampoon a box of tampons. Ugh. <laughs> Certainly an option. Tampumes work well on small objects and inside tight blades. Since you don't really have a case and we still have hours left for this episode, I'd really like to offer you some meaningful legal advice about something. Are you an expert on uh, expired coupons? No, but my wife is. Being that my unemployment was rejected... I'm scraping the bottom of my mom's coupon collection just to stock up on Crisco, which is well beneath my standards. Could you maybe ask your wife a coupon question? If you were fired for not having the it in making people angry anymore, that's not an event that should have disqualified you for unemployment. Really? Gross misconduct, gross insubordination, theft, or a willy-nilly quit or disqualifying events for unemployment simply... Not living up to your employer's standards or not unemployment disqualifying events. Am I gross? It, it means more than ordinary. I'd rather be gross than ordinary. No one on this show is ever ordinary. I got so angry on the unemployment ap application, I wrote the F word repeatedly. As the reason why I was fired. Uh, well, if you are fired for repeatedly using ultra foul language, maybe insulting your supervisor that way, that's probably gross insubordination. What word do you think I wrote? That word I don't say when I say, what the fentanyl? <laughs> you think I wrote that? I wrote fraud. 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 If you were fired for fraud, you'd be disqualified for unemployment. Yeah. Who knew I had to be so serious on my unemployment application? Well, there is an appeals process. You need to see if you can make a timely appeal. You know, um, appeals and unemployment aren't like appeals in court, which can't be based on new and different evidence. You can go down to the unemployment office and testify under oath about why you were fired and bring in supporting papers. Why would I want to support the termination decision? You don't. You want to support what you claim is a reason for your termination that doesn't disqualify you from unemployment. Oh my God. You think I can handle this? 
After all, I'm still pretty conditioned to overreact and make people angry. <laughs> I don't know, but very few lawyers do unemployment appeals. If they do, they'll charge. Do lawyers take coupons? Could I get an employment lawyer on Groupon? I don't think so. This is where we've got to end this tiddling conversation. So if you want to have a conversation about a real employment case, please call me off air at 877-525-0700. That's 877-525-0700. If you want to get some righteous representation on your case against your employer, 877-525-0700. If you've been fired from your job, sexually harassed, owed wages, stuff like that. Next week, you guys, Remus Helms, the most important man in Sun Valley and Fontana will be in this very studio helping me celebrate my 25 years representing employees. Tune in next week from 7 to 8 or listen on YouTube or review some old episodes on WorkplaceLawyer.org. You can listen to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show with me, Carl Gerber, the real workplace lawyer on Talk Radio 790 KBC. Talk to you next week. And then This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group.